Hello to everyone. This is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV and I am Benjamin Pogosian. Today we will discuss the Russian interests in the South Caucasus, what Russia wants, especially after the start of the Russia-Ukraine war in February 2022 and significant geopolitical changes which took place in the region in the period of 2020-2023. From a strategic point of view, I would argue that Russian interests did not change significantly. As always, since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990-91, the Russian main interest was and has been to secure its leading position in the region. Russia, of course, understood that it could not bring the situation back to the Soviet Union time when entire South Caucasus was controlled by Moscow and there was no other foreign country involved in the region or having any influence in the region. This is simply not impossible. However, what Russia wants is to have a leading position in the region, which means that all other players, Turkey, Iran, the United States, the European Union, individual European countries like United Kingdom, France, Italy, Germany or other external players like Israel, India, China. They should be in the South Caucasus, but their influence and their role should be less than the Russian influence and Russian role. Until 2020, Russia mainly was relying on Armenia to secure its interest in the South Caucasus. Georgia was completely pro-Western, both under President Mikhail Saakashvili and also in the early years of the Georgian Dream government, 2012, probably until 2020, Azerbaijan was playing a balance game between Russia and Turkey, between Russia and the West, selling oil and gas to the West, getting money from the West, simultaneously using its money to secure its lobbying positions in Russia, and also using money to buy significant amount of weapons from Russia. However, Azerbaijan was not a country through which Russia was able to pursue its vital interests in the South Caucasus. However, first the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war, then the start of the Russia-Ukraine war in 2022, and September 2023 military takeover of Nagorno-Karabakh by Azerbaijan has significantly changed the situation in the South Caucasus. Armenia, which as I mentioned until 2020, was the main pillar of Russian influence in the South Caucasus, as well as self-proclaimed Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, which population was the most pro-Russian part in the South Caucasus, probably for entire 200 years of Russia's presence here, they both disappeared. So, starting from September 2023, no Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, no Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh, no Russian peacekeepers in Nagorno-Karabakh, and also significant changes in Armenian foreign policy. Some experts speak about the diversification, some argue that what Armenia is doing is a pivot from Russia to the West, others believe that the truth is somewhere in the middle, like its diversification with focus towards the West or Western focus diversification. However, one thing is clear, that starting from 2020, and especially after September 2022, when Azerbaijan launched a large-scale attack against Armenia and Russia did not intervene, and CSTO also did not intervene, Russia cannot view Armenia as its main focal point for pursuing its interests in the South Caucasus. But however, there is no Armenia, but interests are there, as I mentioned, since 1991, the primary goal of Russia to be leading power in the South Caucasus. This role and this desire has not been changed. So what is Russia doing now? What we see in the last two years. First, Russia-Georgia relations. Of course, the Russia's recognition of Abkhazian and South Ossetian independence in 2008 was a very significant blow to Russia-Georgia relations, not only on state-to-state -state level, but also on society levels. And for majority of Georgians, still Russia is an enemy, which occupied up to 20% of Georgian territory. However, at state-to-state -state level, in recent years, 
we saw some rapprochement, some normalization, and this was simultaneously with the process of tensions between Georgia and the West. And these tensions reached their pinnacle in 2024, when Georgian government adopted the Foreign Influence Law, or as many are referring to this law, Foreign Agent Law, and thus the West started to put sanctions on Georgia. First of all, the United States, personal sanctions on different Georgian officials, including representatives of law enforcement bodies, but also the European Union. The membership process is halted, while Georgia just very recently, in December 2023, received candidate status to the European Union. And there are discussions that if Georgian Dream will try to rig October 2024 parliamentary elections in Georgia, some additional sanctions may come, including the cancelling a visa-free regime. So, from Russian perspective, very good development. Georgia, which somehow was an Armenia but for the West in the last 20 years, slowly starting to move away from the West, we may probably say that Georgia is realizing its own diversification policy, deciding not to put all eggs into the Western basket, but trying to also develop relations with China, somehow with India, and also trying to expand economic cooperation with Russia. Simultaneously, we see significant improvements in Russia-Azerbaijan relations. It's difficult to say the real reason, because from one point of view, Azerbaijan humiliated Russia in the last few years, and Azerbaijan took direct actions against Russian vital interests in the South Caucasus. As I mentioned, the forced displacement of all Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh, and then withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers from Nagorno-Karabakh, were clear actions against Russia's vital interests in the South Caucasus. Azerbaijan did those actions. Even more, Azerbaijan killed six Russian peacekeepers during so-called anti-terrorism operation in September 2023, and this was a humiliation for Russia. However, despite being humiliated by Azerbaijan, Russia apparently decided to start the process of improvement of relations with Azerbaijan, hoping that it can use Azerbaijan to pursue its national interests in the South Caucasus. It's difficult to say if Russia believes that Azerbaijan may replace Armenia and become the focal point for Russian interest in the region, given still strategic alliance between Azerbaijan and Turkey, more and more emphasis in Azerbaijan's foreign policy on Turkic world, on unification of Turkic world, as we hear many times from President Aliyev and other high-level Azerbaijani officials. Most probably, Russia does not believe that Azerbaijan may replace Armenia as a focal point for Russia, but Russia believes that as far as relations with Armenia are tense, and it's very difficult to assess when armenia russia relations will start their improvement, then Russia would like to use both Azerbaijan and Georgia to secure its vital interest in the South Caucasus. So strategically, in the last 33 years, no change in Russian foreign policy. Kremlin wants to be the leading power in the South Caucasus. However, when we look into the tools, there are significant changes in the last few years. Armenia, which was the primary tool for Russia to pursue its interests its national interests, are now a little bit moving away from Russia, while Azerbaijan trying to use Azerbaijan and also trying to improve relations with Georgia, probably hoping that with Georgia and Azerbaijan it can compensate the loss of Armenia as a primary tool to push its interests in the South Caucasus. Of course, we have to wait for another month to see what will happen after October 26 Georgian parliamentary elections. If Georgian Dream remains in power, probably the current policy of diversification, of moving away from the West, not cutting all the ties with the West, but just moving a little bit away from the West, and improving or developing relations with China, with other countries, and also trying to get as much benefit as possible from economic relations with Russia will continue, which means that Georgia can be part of the Russia strategy in the South Caucasus to be the dominant player. And as far as Azerbaijan, or at least Azerbaijani leadership, have some concerns that if there will be full takeover of all state institutions of Azerbaijan by Turkey, including army and special services, then there is a no guarantee that the family rule in Azerbaijan will continue. Probably Azerbaijan also would like to have relations with Russia, improve relations with Russia to balance 
growing Turkish influence and potential danger of taking over all Azerbaijani state institutions by Turkey. So, in the coming few years, if nothing changes and Armenia continues its Western-oriented diversification, probably we will see more rapprochement between Russia and Azerbaijan, more normalization between Russia and Georgia, and Russia will use these two countries to secure its interest in the South Caucasus. Of course, many things can be changed if war is stopped in Ukraine. Not finished with peace agreement, this is not realistic for decades, but if war is stopped and we will have a frozen conflict in Ukraine, similar to the Cyprus style probably, and if as a result of the frozen conflict in Ukraine we will see some sort of semi-normalization of relation between the West and Russia, because even to stop the war in Ukraine you need some sort of Russia-West, and in particular Russia-US understanding. So if this understanding is placed and the war is stopped in Ukraine, many things will be changing South Caucasus. If not, then in the next few years we will have the current situation. This is all for today and we will meet soon.